Hello, LinkedIn Universe, and welcome to another episode of Real Talk with Bob Marr. Super excited to be here with you today. Uh, today is going to be our second installment of ultrasonic cleaners. So the previous video, I kind of walked you through what an ultrasonic cleaner is, how to use it, all that kind of stuff. Today, I wanted to share with you what to put in the ultrasonic and, and how to use it on a daily basis. So you've already tested it, you've got it up and ready, and you're ready to start putting instruments in it. So the first thing you're gonna do is make sure that all of your instruments are pre-cleaned. You wanna place them in a tray that's been designed for use in an ultrasonic cleaner, meaning it has openings that allow the sonic waves to flow through. We wanna make sure that all of our lumens are completely filled. Again, all of the lumens are completely filled prior to going into the ultrasonic. We want to make sure that all of the instruments are completely submerged. They're all under the water, none sticking above the level of the water. And finally, all hinged instruments are going to be open so that the ultrasonic bubbles have an opportunity to come in contact with all of the tiny nooks and crannies that they need to. So we've got our tray in there. Now we want to talk about things that are compatible with the ultrasonic or not compatible things that we don't want to stick in there. We want to make sure if you put your stainless steel instruments in there that they're not combined with other metals like brass or titanium or things like that, that it's just stainless steel instruments. But we want to avoid placing in the ultrasonic chrome-plated instruments, ebonized instruments, plastic instruments, cork, glass, rubber. If you stick needles in there, you want to make sure that they have an IFU that says they're okay to go inside the ultrasonic. Fiber optic instruments are a definite no-go. You don't want to put anything in there like a light cord or a scope that can be damaged by the cavitation. Very expensive instruments and very expensive to repair, so make sure they don't go in there. And make sure if you're using an ultrasonic that has an irrigation port, meaning it can flush instruments that are lumened, like laparoscopic instruments or bariatric instruments, robotic instruments. You want to make sure that they're hooked up properly, but also you want to make sure that that port is not plugged so that it can flush the instruments the way that they're designed to be flushed. And that's pretty much all when you're thinking about using an ultrasonic. So make sure that you're using it properly. Remember, it doesn't disinfect and it doesn't sterilize. It only cleans and everything going into your ultrasonic need to be pre-cleaned. Don't stick gross bio burden in there because it's not going to work the way it's intended to work. So before I close, I wanted to just run by you very quickly some real talk about ultrasonic cleaners. So I can't tell you how many facilities that I have been in that either have an ultrasonic but it's not working or they don't have an ultrasonic at all. The bottom line is that you have got to have an operational ultrasonic unit in your facility. If you do not, I can assure you you're not following the manufacturer's written instructions for use, particularly with loaner trays. Any kind of orthopedic tray, any kind of neuro tray are going to have ultrasonic standards for cleaning their devices. And if you don't have one, they are not getting cleaned properly and your patients aren't getting the standard of care that they deserve. So make sure that you have an ultrasonic and that it is operational. If you do not have an ultrasonic, this is for the administrators. Provide the funds that your facilities need to get an ultrasonic to do the job that they were meant to do, and that is providing a quality product for your patients. I say again, administrators, Make sure that your sterile processing departments have the equipment that they need to do their job properly. This has been Real Talk, and I'm Bob Mars.